Hiya, it's Amanda here from Lolly Lulu Crafts and today we have our first video project using our craft box. I have made a photo post for you using the craft box and we've also done an opening of the craft box video. So if you want to take a look at that, click the link below uh, if you're on YouTube and that will take you to the blog post and I will have all of those linked into this post plus a load of photos of the project that we're going to be making today. So let's get crafting. So for today's project I've got something a little different and as you can see we're starting out here with a piece of wood not a piece of card. This is like a wood plaque and as you can see it's got holes already in it. Now I'm just going over it with a coat of the white gesso that just preps your wood ready for any paints or glues etc that you may be adding to it and helps that adhere to that wood. I did also go around the edges of that plaque as well. I've now taken some letters from a box in my stash and I've spelt out the word lolly if you can guess why and I've also got the lovely frame that's also wood that came in our craft box kit and all of these I am now covering with a coat of the gesso. Now the frame particularly was had to be very careful and delicate with it to make sure that I not only got all the sides and the top but all the little pieces in between as well and I wanted to make sure that I got the edges of all the letters as well so that when I painted it it didn't have the wood look at the sides so even if I missed it with the paint I actually got hold of it using the gesso so it didn't look too woody it had that white look and now I'm just painting a second coat of the gesso onto the plaque and I will also do the same onto the letters and frame. Now I actually failed to film this part but I actually did um, take three colours of my acrylic paints and I added those to the plaque. I then took the light blue and the green colour and I mixed it together to create a slightly different tone of sort of mermaid green as I sort of think of it and I just painted that over my letters and my frame. I then grabbed some papers from the craft box plus a selection of plain papers and one piece of butterfly pattern paper from my stash and then my favourite Mod Podge, this beautiful glittery Mod Podge. And then having been inspired by the glitter which you can see there, I decided that actually I'd like to add some glitter to the letters and the frame. So I took this Cosmic Shimmer Twinkles, um, sort of, it's a bit like stickles, and I just layered that onto the paint uh frame etc now it wasn't entirely dry yet but i wanted to tear my paper so that the butterfly piece of paper kind of just fitted underneath my frame so i was just being a bit careful there uh but to size it up i needed to do that so then i just took some of the other papers and you can see there um some black paper which in the end i didn't use the black but you can see the lovely shell paper from the craft box and some other bits and pieces and I'm just bringing the frame in and just trying to now rip the papers so that it kind of fits how I want it to and to allow the frame to show up um, but also to allow some of that lovely paint to show from the side so you can see I'm just really going with the flow of this and just ripping it as I want to kind of really um, I didn't want to get too hung up on being that precise with it um, the only bit that I wanted to be that precise with really was the um, butterfly paper here so I've just um, now got my Mod Podge and as I say this is this gorgeous glittery Mod Podge now don't panic when you use Mod Podge it is actually meant to be put all over literally put it all over underneath your paper over the paper everything it dries like a glaze if you make sure you get the one that's kind of all in one 
and it you can then use it to finish off you don't need to put anything else over the top unless you want to do like a crackle glaze or a real high gloss but then even the mudge podge can come as a gloss or a satin sheen finish and with this even i could have done one coat of the glitter or one section with the glitter and then another section just using plain mudge podge but i decided to go for the whole glittery effect since it's kind of meant to be slightly a sea theme i wasn't massively going into that kind of underwater theme but it was it was there um and i just thought it was a, a nod to that as you can see i'm just popping down some of those papers that i sort of ripped one part but i hadn't ripped around the top and the size this blue piece here was another one of the ones that i wanted to be reasonably precise because I wanted the part of the frame to curl over it in a particular position so that I could put the little ship over so it looked like where the frame was the water was there and the ship was sort of sitting in the sea so that was the quite important part to put that in the right place but as I say the rest of it was pretty random just wanted to make sure that that there was just like a little indication of the lilac there and and that the shell paper was what was showing and some of the kind of that kind of wood effect that kind of old paint look there was showing so really the papers from the craft box were the ones that were showing the most i decided that i didn't want to add that extra piece at the top so i just got ripping now pulling that just back past the top of my piece of wood there so that a little bit of the wood was showing because then we have that lovely paint but on my previous attempt at um doing not with this but on another mixed media product i actually left it to dry with it all hanging over the edges and then i sort of cut it off by hand afterwards and sort of did it that way so you'll see that later because i did film that so i don't want to go into too much detail about that that was another project that i have got for you and um as i said in my blog post which hopefully you'll read i um sort of showing this mixed media thing a bit out of order because i haven't done this kind of work for years this is actually how i started paper crafting doing sort of projects like this and i haven't done it for years and so now to kind of done a couple in a relatively short space of time is kind of weird but kind of fun too so i was just drying that off a bit and now i'm just going around with my file just to make sure there's no papers overhanging and you can see there all the glisten of the mod podge where it's dried and then when you've gone round with the file that gives you the opportunity to just cover any bits that you've exposed by doing that second coat of mod podge and again it's really up to you how many coats you do on this one i think i only did two but on the other project that i've got coming for you i think i did four or five because i really wanted it really glossy and strong and really thick so you know it's up to you really what works and how it sort of the effect looks for you so now that's dried enough i am taking a stencil this particular stencil and this texture paste was not in the kit it's a gorgeous texture paste from creative expressions and it's one of the i think it's called mint something mint i'll put all the details of it on my uh, blog post for you anyway but um, I then kind of added into it this sort of crystal glitter so that it, I kind of mixed it all together and it also I wanted to make it kind of bumpy so I kind of deliberately sort of used the palette knife to make it kind of bump up and down in different sort of um, through the stencil because I didn't want it absolutely perfectly flat through the stencil I wanted it to have real texture and it dries really quickly it's surprising just how quickly it does go off so I mean not so fast that you have to be panicking when you're working but you know 10-15 minutes and you you can move on and carry on with your working it's not a big deal but I just thought this looked really kind of sea like with the colour and the um, kind of sort of flowing of it again it was a nod to that i'm not massively going towards that theme but i just thought it was kind of a nod to the theme and you guys all know i love these colors you know my website is kind of these tones so i thought this would look really cool hanging on my wall so or somewhere anyway in my room 
so I will definitely be doing that now I've taken some of the cosmic shimmer embossing powders this is the vintage sort of extra thick and then I've mixed it with just some of the normal color here this is I think some sort of like particularly um, like shimmery purple and then a regular um, sort of aqua tone I think but again I'll put the details of the specific colors on the blog post for you and I just sort of piled it up I didn't really bother with putting anything down and as you can see it's come out really nicely and it's just given a really nice effect down that side and I'd only waited about 10 minutes and as you can see I'm sort of piled that up over the texture paste it was dry enough to work over and this time I put a little bit more of the um, aqua tone in there because I just wanted it really kind of more of the green color at the edge and the only thing you need to watch is that when you start off with your heat gun it might blow around if you're too close so just watch that a bit so now I'm just positioning my frame which has now dried and you can see all that lovely glitter and I'm just using my cosmic shimmer glue here it's a really strong glue and it's going to hold this just fine and all of the Mod Podge has dried as well and again that didn't take massively long to do that and so I'm just sticking that down but then I'm getting my letters and I'm just positioning them and I'm using the kind of shape of the frame the inner part of the frame to create again that flow in the whole sort of theme and the letters kind of flowing around that um, frame and I think that looks really good and then I'm just using my Cosmic Shimmer to stick that down. Now obviously that first letter hasn't got a lot to stick to. So I'm just making sure that it's stuck enough and it's going to stay put. Which it did once I fiddled around and just wriggled it a little bit to make sure it was got enough on there. And then the great thing is that the Cosmic Shimmer gives you enough time before it sets. That you can actually just fiddle around with the letters and make sure that it works now there's my little ship you can see how that's worked now with the frame how that kind of blue is just on where that frame part has um, popped out but you might see that in a minute a bit better so I'm playing around with some flowers that came in the kit and the gem and the lovely metal seashell charm and the actual seashell and I'm using my hot glue gun for this I can't pretend that I'm any sort of expert with the hot glue gun and certainly the burns on my finger prove that um, I did get better as time went on and um, sort of burnt myself less and less and learnt uh, you know more and more but I really enjoyed using it um, and I like the way that everything kind of stuck down pretty fast and you, therefore like with the flowers they stayed where I put them whereas when if I'd have used my glue gel for this it they would have possibly moved around a bit and I needed them to stay put so now I'm working on the other side and I'm using that beautiful piece of lace that came in the kit in fact all the flowers there I think I added just a couple there one that big um aqua colored one I added and I think that and a couple of little white ones that was it but the rest all came in the kit um, and just fiddling around here just and they saw the little white wooden ship's wheel that I've just popped in there and also you might notice that there's some of the um, sort of green sort of twiny wire apart that comes off the flowers is now curled I just curled those up on a lot of the flowers that had it because I thought that would add just a nice bit of interest to the sort of texture there and you can see I've added the bottle and some of the gems and the metal charms and again now I'm just using my hot glue gun and you'll see here oh I just dropped it because I literally got hot glue all over me and you don't even want to know the words that I was thinking I didn't say them out loud I was very good now here you'll see I used the um, cosmic shimmer to stick the lace down it didn't work um, and I went back later and used the hot glue gun to re-stick it down so if you're sort of following along do that now um, and with these I'm just 
felt later with these little smaller sort of thinner flowers that it was better to put the glue the hot glue down onto the actual surface rather than onto the flower the bigger flowers that was no problem but these sort of thinner flowers it was easier to put it down and sort of pop the flower down onto it because I found that I burnt my fingers quite a lot that way and that's where you can see that the um, lace there came up and I just popped it back down by adding the glue to the surface which is what I had learnt by then it's not a good idea to do it with thin stuff straight onto thin stuff where my fingers were so you can see I'm getting a lot quicker and there you saw that sort of thinner flower I popped it down the glue onto the surface and then I used my palette knife and just added that in now I'm just playing around with the position of those last flowers and leaves and the little bottle I absolutely adored the little bottle this is so not my kind of thing normally or at least it used to be but it hasn't been for a very long time and to have these I didn't have these on my previous mixed media project this is very very different look and it was so fun to play around with the flowers and just really go with the flow and uh, I mean, I, I did ha plan it out a little, as you saw in advance. I just positioned a few bit, you know, and sort of thought where I wanted things and had a rough idea. And, uh, you know, but it was just such fun. I really enjoyed doing something different. And there we just stuck that lovely metal charms and those beautiful sort of square iridescent gems almost. They were just stunning. Now that I just popped that and added a bit of extra glue at the side probably wouldn't recommend that it kind of all leaked out and all over me so that wasn't my best plan so that's that all finished and stuck down all that part of it and you can see how that just looks so nice I think and now we've got these elements which were also in the kit and you can see I've positioned a load of them onto my plaque I guess you'd call it and I'm just going in, lifting up the element, putting a piece of bit of glue down and then popping the element into the glue. As you can see, I've now learnt my lesson and I'm doing it that way around for these smaller pieces. And um, when I didn't, like there, I burnt myself. And I really loved like the little, uh, those sort of iridescent sort of shells were absolutely divine and the little blue flowers it just brought everything together and the crystals in the center of the flowers that were kind of a bit more floppy in a way they, they i loved those and it just brought it all together i then decided to add a bit of hot glue to the center of the one flower that i had added from my stash so that i could add some of those little beads to it it didn't quite work how i wanted it so i then added i think it would have worked if i'd used my glue gel but because i didn't i used hot glue it didn't work it didn't stick into the beads didn't stick in so what i did rather than fiddle around was i decided to just use the same glitter uh, glue that I'd used on the letters and actually I think that worked really well because it brought everything together. I'm now just taking my Zig two-way glue gel uh, glue pen and I'm just randomly going over the flowers and the shells and now I'm sprinkling some of the same embossing powder that I've previously used over the flowers now you'll and the shells you'll notice that I didn't bother actually adding the zig to the flowers at the top I decided that actually I really didn't need to bother I could just sprinkle it on and just gently heat it as I'd done previously with my glue um, heat gun and as you can see particularly on that one there it really looked effective and I loved it on the shells as well so then in the kit came this gorgeous cord. Now what I did was I kept the sellotape that came on it and, and just wrapped it around, well it was kind of on each end and I just made that into a little point and pulled and used that to pull it through the holes. And this is gonna be used as the cord so that it ha can hang off whatever I want to hang it. So I can hang it on my wall or on the door or whatever. So now I'm just knotting it. Now I've decided on the length and I'm just knotting it and then I'm just cutting the excess off and it kind of frays away. So I decided that what I would do is I would actually put some of the hot glue onto the end 
and make almost like a little point almost like the sellotape had done now obviously it's really hot and sticky so I waited till it had cooled enough and then I kind of wrapped it while it was still enough for the glue to take some you know the tape that I wrapped around it would adhere to it and it just created like a little end that kept that tidy I then used the hot glue just to pop a little blob on the back there and stick the ends down so that they didn't pop out to the side and show at the front and that's it my finished piece I think it looks absolutely stunning I am so impressed with the contents of the box I hope you've enjoyed this week taking a look at everything and I hope you've enjoyed this project thanks for watching and bye for now bye